Welcome. In this presentation, we walk you through how we use tall target testing for rimfire trainers. Let's start with a little background on why we're doing tall target testing for rimfire. We have some uh, comments about tactical scopes, and then we get into the tall target setup, up range, and at the bench. Explain course of fire, look at analysis results, and wrap up. Tall target testing is a shooting exercise we do at the range. It's part of the uh, short range testing that's uh, put forward by Applied Ballistics. This is really a requirement for success in long range and extended long range shooting. So exactly what is short range? In the case of center fire, about 100 yards. What we use in rim fire is 50 yards. And we're trying to achieve two things. First, we want to ensure the scope is installed correctly and accurately. We want to make sure we've aligned bases, rings, reticules, and spirit levels. And this is needed for any uh, size and performance level of scope. The second thing is determine a scope correction factor. Here, we're interested in the uh, turret dialing that uh, you do to make sure that the elevation you crank in is actually the elevation and the point of impact that you get. You figure that there's probably some scope manufacturers that uh, do this sort of thing in manufacturing, but Applied Ballistics has certainly championed this for all of us to use in the field. They have a worksheet that you can download that actually walks you through the process. We would like to provide a few observations and comments about uh, scopes that are used in tactical matches versus what you might be familiar with in the field. We're not really making uh, reviews and recommendations here, but we would like to thank Vortex Optics for being a 2019 sponsor of our local precision rimfire match. Magnifications are usually uh, higher here. You'll see uh, sometimes uh, certainly 3x, 4x, 5x ranges, high powers will generally be greater than uh, 18 power. You'll see the tube size in addition to the traditional 1 inch, you'll also see 30 and 34 millimeter tubes. For parallax adjustments, you have two options. You have the side adjustment here, but you also will see the objective belt. For known distant matches, it probably doesn't make much difference. But for unknown distant matches where you might be making adjustments in parallax several times within a stage, most folks will feel that the side adjustment's a little bit easier. For reticules, they're a little more sophisticated than just the simple crosshairs. For example, here's a crosshair with hash marks that helps with visualizing windage and bullet drop. You will also see even more sophisticated reticules like shown here. So not only does it uh, help with measurement of targets downrange, but also includes the ability to do uh, Kentucky windage more accurate. It's uh, very common you might have both turret adjustment and Kentucky windage going on in the same stage. Turrets are generally larger, easier to see, and, uh, and adjust, and they might have caps or they're open. You'll need a base with a 20 to 30 MOA ramp. Uh, not only do you need this for not running out of uh, elevation on the turret, but also this uh, help center the reticule gives a, gives a little relief to, the, uh, to that mechanism. You certainly want durable rings to hold all this together, and then also you want a spirit level. Uh, last but not least is uh, consider flip caps to protect the glass and shoot and scoot sort of applications. Here's our tall target 50 yards up range. There's a couple of ways to make this target. One is to start off with a blank piece of paper and use a carpenter level to get a plumb line. We want a different way. We're using uh, grid paper. This is uh, scaled in 10, 10 divisions per inch and uh, is available in a broad number of sizes. So this way we can build the tar st target stand, put it down range, and then uh, we drop a, a plumb line to line up with uh, one of the uh, lines here. Here's a close-up of the uh, plumb bob. 
This way we can uh, adjust at the time we mount the target to get, uh, to get this plumb. And it's uh, easier to make the uh, target more precisely uh, on the bench and then just mount it and level it here. On the bench to support the rifle, you certainly could do this test with uh, bipods or, or bags. But uh, we go with this rifle rest because it's uh, uh, quicker and it allows us to be more accurate. You don't get the uh, pivoting you might get from a uh, bipod. Here's the uh, front stop to return the rifle back to battery. It's not like you have much recoil and rim fire anyway. You just want to make sure you don't have the uh, sling swivel stuck underneath the saddle. And then also you want to level the uh, level the rest uh, uh, carefully on the bench. A few of the other things you need. This is the Weatherfold weather meter to get the atmospherics to feed into the uh, ballistics calculator. And we know the uh, range here quite accurately, but we just kind of verify that with the uh, range finder. We suggest you use the same ammunition you'd use for your, your matches. That reduces variables there. But uh, basically with this in place, you're, uh, you're all set on the bench. Here's our tall target uprange. You can see the uh, shooting lines as well as the plumb line. We're ready to mount the rifle and establish a good shooting position. Once we've done that, we want to rotate the, uh, the vertical line in the reticule to line up with the plumb lines here. So if you think about it, the uh, lines here are plumb, the rest is plumb, and now we want to line up the uh, line up to get a vertical line there. Uh, once you seat the rifle, it's good to double check and make sure that the rest settles that you're still uh, you're still level there. And once the uh, the uh, you have the vertical alignment there, uh, last but not least, you adjust the spirit level to show that this is plumb. So if you think about it, we're we're plumb here downrange. Uh, the rest is plumb. We've lined up the scope, and now the uh, the spirit level is lined up, and uh, we're ready to go. Oh, and by the way, don't forget your notebook. The course of fire for this test is quite straightforward. These are all five shot groups. Uh, the point of aim is going to be the aiming dots here. Uh, line one is, uh, we go ahead and group one is second our 50 yard zero. We move up to the uh, 100 yard elevation from what the ballistic calculator gives us, in this case, seven and a quarter MOA, do another group. And then the third group, we move this up to 150 yards that's another, uh, that's now 16 uh, MOA. Uh, you could go farther, but this is the range that we're interested in for our match. So we, uh, we just go to the 150 yards. Then we switch over to the second line, again, aiming at this dot. We again shoot the 150 yard, leaving the current settings. Move the scope down to the seven and a quarter MOA for 100 yards, do another group. And then we return down back to our zero at 50 yard and do yet another group. Uh, line three is just the uh, plumb line to co-witness with the line on the target. And then uh, this is uh, line four to spare because from time to time something gets grouped up and it's always good to have an extra. Let's look at results. The graph paper we use is fairly delicate. So we use the little dots to mark out the groups makes it easier to visualize and also easier to measure. For each of the groups, we give the point of impact expected, point of impact actual, which allows us to then calculate the correction factor. When we looked at the groups, we had about a full value five uh, mile per hour gust coming from the left. So we're gonna discount the ones a little bit going to the right and uh, we're pleased to see the alignment is, is well up and down uh, the, uh, the scope adjustment. When we first saw 0.977, that was a little disappointing. But overall, we're very close to one and feel we don't need a correction factor for our adjustments on elevation. You'll notice a small variation between coming back down versus where we originally started. It's very hard to build these kind of mechanisms without some backlash, some mechanical hysteresis. 
So we uh, think this is probably less than a quarter of an MOA. Uh, it's good to understand this, and if you want to correct for it, uh, you just over-rotate and come back into it. But uh, this is probably down to about the limit that we can adjust the scope anyway, and uh, we're not going to worry an awful lot about uh, hysteresis here. And as far as the base rings, reticule, and spirit level, our uh, up and down alignment we think is uh, very good going up and down, and we don't have any can't. Uh, so it's either negligible or there really isn't any. We'll talk in a minute about why that's important. We understand a lot of shooters might find this work mundane and uh, not very useful. After all, you spend a lot of money for rifles and scopes, put that together, and uh, you've got everything you need. But uh, we can assure you through hard lessons learned, this is a requirement for doing long range and extended long range shooting. Of course, with center fire, that's out to a mile or two, and in rim fire, it might be out to 300 yards. So if you're not set up properly, you end up with uh, bullet drop errors. So you tend to think your coefficients of drags and your ballistic calculations and stuff are off, and it's actually because the scope's not set up right. You want to avoid can't. Um, if, you, if you move up uh, your elevations and you're going off at an angle, that might look like windage. So you blame your inability to adjust windage. So if you uh, take can't out of this, you actually get better, uh, you're better both doping on both elevation and windage. It's also important to understand allow for any turret backlash. Uh, the uh, scopes are very high quality scopes, well controlled manufacturing. So hopefully when you do this, you find out there aren't any issues, but it's good to know that basically what we're trying to do is uh, an important platform health check. How often do you need to repeat this exercise? It really depends. A uh, big match coming up, a lot at stake. You might want to double check and make sure uh, you're going where you think you are. Uh, of course, any changes in components, mounts, rings, such. And then what about heavy use in the real world or, or accidents? Sometimes uh, these kind of matches can get pretty furious and something can get banged around. You want to check and see if you're still good. And then also the wear of internal scope mechanisms. Think about what's going to wear out in the scope. It's probably not going to be the glass. It's going to be the internal mechanism and constantly adjusting uh, parallax and elevation and windage uh, is going to cause some fatigue and you'd like to know if it's going to wear out. So really uh, think about uh, tall target testing for rim fire. Make it part of your uh, shooting DNA. Prepare for success. You're going to get a better return on your uh, investment, which sometimes can be considerable. You'll have more enjoyment because you know exactly what's going on with your, with your platform. And of course, it's going to increase your competitiveness. This completes our presentation. And as you're thinking about subscribing, please look over these important notes and disclaimers. They're here for your protection and ours. Thanks for watching. See you soon.